This Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. And by Boris Effects, a leading developer of visual effects, titling, video editing, and workflow tools and plugins for broadcast, post production, and film professionals. And by Rampant Design Tools, creators of QuickTime based style effects for video and designed to significantly enhance content for editors, visual effects artists, and motion graphic designers. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial. And in this lesson, I want to talk about the new 8.9 release of Avid Media Composer and I want to show you some of the new features that have been included. Now, we're going to cover new features that include updates to the source browser, updates to the interface, updates to color correction, and even updates to the source settings. Now, I'm going to keep this introduction short because I want to get into Media Composer and show you some of these cool new updates. Now, before we go on, I want to remind you that these tutorials are designed to get in and take a very in-depth look at very specific aspects of editing inside of Avid Media Composer. But sometimes you just need to get the information and get yourself up and running lightning fast. Well, if that's the case, head on over and check out my Mac Pro Video training series on Media Composer, where lesson one will get you up and running in Media Composer in about an hour. All right, so let's Command or Alt and Tab into Avid Media Composer. And I think I'm going to start out by talking about one of my favorite tools inside of Media Composer, and that is the Source Browser. Now, I happen to have a folder active where I have some footage from Artbeats, and as always, I'm going to be using Artbeats footage in this tutorial, and you can check out the clips that I'm going to be using, plus thousands of more over at Artbeats.com. Now, right now, taking a look at the Source Browser doesn't look any different from how we normally use it, except we have some great under the hood features that have been added that you probably wouldn't even notice if I didn't show it to you. Now, for me, when I get in and I you know, source out clips, I really like to get a good look at my clips. And the way the source browser used to be is I could zoom in on the clips to get a pretty good thumbnail idea, but I'd still be constantly double clicking on them to call them up into the, the source monitor so I could play them to see if that was really the clip that I wanted. Well, I don't need to do that anymore because now inside of the source browser, I have the ability to zoom in not only to pretty much where we were before, but in a whole lot further as well. You can see that you can get a really, really, really good look at these clips. And as always, you can scrub through them to get the best possible idea of whether these are the clips that you're going to want to use or not. Now, with the way that I had the view set up before with the small thumbnails, you'll have to imagine that we had hundreds of clips in here. And, and to be honest, you might actually want to see as many of these clips as possible. And what we now have the ability to do is to actually drop down the source browser to get an even bigger window for us to see as many clips as possible at one time. All right, let's close out of the source browser. Let's talk about a feature that's actually coming to us from Media Composer first. We've actually got our first sort of, you know, side uh, sidestep feature update going from Media Composer first to Avid Media Composer. And one thing that I thought was very cool inside of Media Composer first was that they color coded the source and the record monitors green and blue. And it's a great visual way for an editor, especially an editor who's new to either Media Composer or editing, to really see where their clips are and what monitor is associated with what side of the timeline. And that feature has been added into Media Composer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to head to our settings. I'm going to scroll down to our interface setting here. And you'll see those new features are added right here at the top. The Show Source Record Colors in Composer and Show Source Record Colors in Timeline. Once I turn them on and say Apply, you'll notice those colors now appear not only up in the Composer window, but they appear down here in the timeline as well. What I'm going to do is just say OK. I'm just going to call up a clip into the preview window here. And you'll see as soon as I do, we now have the same color coding down here that we do up in the Composer window, which is just a better way for an editor to understand exactly what is going on in their timeline. Now, speaking of the timeline, I want to come down to our timeline settings. Let's come all the way down to timeline. What I'm going to do is head on over to the Edit tab because we do have a couple new features in here that I want to point out. One is directly related to the timeline. One is directly related to effects and working in the timeline. The first one is the position bar snap feature. I'm just going to turn that on. And what I can now do is simply just drag down the timeline 
and the time bar is just going to jump or snap to every edit that I happen to have in my sequence. Now for me personally, I'm not a big fan of this one because I like to just get through and drag through all my stuff, but if you need to quickly just get through and just jump down all to a whole bunch of clips, a great and simple way to do it. But the one that I really, really like, and to be honest, I'm really actually quite sad about it, is the next one I'm going to show you, which is right down here. Applying Effects opens Effects Editor. Now, why would I be sad about that? Well, one thing that I know that you're accustomed to hearing me say over and over again is when I apply an effect to a clip, I'll always say, now let's step into Effects Mode. And if, you know, for me, my shortcut is Shift and Y on the keyboard. And if you don't have Effects Mode mapped, to a key on your keyboard, you can always find it right here at the top of your timeline. I know you've heard me say that a million times. Unfortunately, now I don't get to say it anymore. Because now if I turn that feature on, Applying Effects opens Effects Editor, and I say OK. If I call up the Effects Palette, and you know what? I'm already on the S Effect effect from Generate Sapphire. Let's just use that one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that effect, and I'm going to drag it and drop it down onto a shot in my timeline, as soon as I let go, the effects editor is automatically going to be opened and ready for me to get in and make parameter changes to this effect. So you'll see why I'm sad. I don't need to say, you know, how to get into effects mode anymore because now you can actually get in and have the effects editor opened immediately for you when you apply an effect. Okay, let's talk now about probably a feature that I can already hear all the editors out there in Media Composer world high-fiving each other like crazy. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add some music to this edit here, and I'm just gonna add eight channels of audio. Okay, let's just drop that in there. I don't wanna remove the video, but it actually doesn't matter for the purposes of what we're doing. I'm just gonna add some more audio tracks here, and we're just gonna drop this audio in basically on eight channels, because here's the situation. What we're gonna do is we're gonna call up our good friend, the audio mixer. Now, we all know the standard audio mixer. I'm actually in the perfect configuration for this new feature. You'll see I can actually drag the audio mixer open to get a fairly large audio mixer that I can be working with, okay? To be honest, a little bit too big. I'm not a big, huge fan of it, but to be honest, it's the only audio mixer that I've ever known. Now, I'm just gonna switch back to stereo mode here. There we go, so I can get actually all of my panners and I can get all the faders and everything. But what I'd really like to do is to really like to have this, you know, the, the audio mixer streamlined, a lot smaller, just a lot more compact, so I can stick it somewhere on my screen and still have access to all of these channels. Well, that's another new feature inside of Media Composer. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click anywhere inside of the audio mixer, and I'm going to head down to the Set Display Options, and you'll notice that we have the option for a narrow mixer. As soon as I select that, now take a look at the new streamlined narrow audio mixer. Very cool, very sleek, and to be honest, once I start adding more channels, it's just going to make it a lot easier to keep this tool as compact as possible, and I really just love the overall new look of it as well. Let's just isolate a couple of these channels. I'm just going to play this back, and you'll see. There we go, looking very nice. Audio's a little bit loud, but that's okay. All right, so let's move on now and let's talk about some new color correction features. What we're going to do is I'm just going to delete all this audio because I don't need it anymore. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to come up to my color correction workspace. Let's just call that up here. Very nice. All right, now what I also need to do before I move on is I need to talk about the two new settings that have been added. Let's actually head over to our settings and I'm going to come to the correction setting. Let's just come all the way up here to correction. And the two new settings that have been added is the dual split remains active during playback and the waveform vector scope updates in real time. How you're accustomed to working inside of color correction mode is once you start making color correction changes, you can see I actually have the split mode turned on right now. I'm just gonna turn that off for a second here, is that as I'm making changes, I have to wait until I let go of the mouse for the, in this case, the waveform to update. To be honest, I'd really rather see these updates happening as I'm getting in and making the changes inside of my color wheels. Well, if I head back to the correction setting and I turn on waveform vector scope updates in real time, as soon as I say OK, you'll now see that that waveform, and if I had a vector scope up, would be updating in real time. Okay, now the other feature that I did mention inside of the correction settings 
is the dual split remains active during playback. So let me actually just head back up and I'm going to turn dual split on. Now, to be honest, I don't have much of a shot here. So I'm just going to adjust it. I'm just going to trim this a little bit here just so that we have a little bit more to work with here. Just so that you can see that when I do come back here, let me just actually step back into my color correction workspace here. So when I do come back and you'll see that I have the split turned on, I can actually come back and hit play and it's going to play and it's going to stay on the screen. No problem. Now, something else, and I'm just going to undo what I just did, is the fact that we also have the ability now to come up and we can actually preview this with a three second pre and post roll to get an idea of what our color correction is going to look like with the shot before and the shot after it. All right, so the last new feature that I want to talk about inside of the 8.9 updated media composer is one that's located inside of your source settings. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to switch back to my source record editing. There we go. And what I'm going to do, and you'll see that my, I think I need to update my actual setup here. There we go. We'll just get it back to where we were. We'll just come back in here and save this as the current. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to a clip that I know has audio attached to it. And I have this clip here. Now this clip comes courtesy of Edit Stock. And if you want to check out their great library of sample projects that you can learn to edit with, you can check them out at editstock.com. Okay. Now with this clip, this clip just has audio with it. If I hit play to it so that I can go pro get a pro license and and see but let's say goes. hypothetically that when this clip came to me he was slightly out of sync on the actual original clip but the problem was is that he wasn't just one frame out of sync he was actually less than a frame out of sync and i needed to get in and do a sub sample sync to this clip how would i go about doing that well if i come to this clip and i right click and i say source settings you'll now see that inside of the source settings window is a new tab called appropriately enough audio. If I click on it, you'll now see I have a visual representation of my audio. Now you can see that what these bars represent is one frame. Okay, so what this represents up here is the clip the way that it is now and this down here represents the clip the way that it's going to be. And what I can do is I can come up and I can just take the audio slip drag bar and once I start dragging it, you'll see that we're actually making sample adjustments. This is subframe audio adjustments so that we can take this clip and put it back into sync. This is a very, very, very cool new feature inside a Media Composer that people have been asking about for so long, which is being able to get in to the sample level of a clip to make sync adjustments. And you can now do it by simply right clicking on a clip calling it up in the source settings, making your changes, and once you say apply and okay, this sync update will be applied to the clip. Now, if I was to apply it now, the clip would obviously be out of sync, but if you needed to get in and make those very, very, very minor sync adjustments, you can now do it inside of version 8.9. Now, as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you that if you're looking for great deals on Avid Media Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase at videoguys.com. MC101 is going to be a coupon code that you're going to love because the great team at Boris FX is offering a 10% discount on BCC10 AVX or multi-host licenses, full or upgrades, again using the coupon code MC101. And finally, Rampant Design Tools is offering 25% off any non-discounted product they offer in their library, again, you guessed it, by using coupon code MC101. And finally, don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.